I have to be really honest. People that say that they can't escape the paparazzi are full of shit. <laughs> so, let me just be the artist to throw everybody under the bus. <laughs> and my head of security is standing over there, nodding. I don't spend money on houses and lots of cars, but I do spend money on security, and they never find me. So, uh, no, it doesn't run my life, because uh, getting my photo taken is not what makes me feel like an artist. It's being in front of 50,000 fans, screaming, I was born this way, baby. That's why I'm here. <laughs> So, we have another video question from Peach Dog uh, 1224 <laughs> As I said, the, the usernames are great. Peach Dog? <laughs> Peach Dog, uh, who wants to know a little bit about regrets. Hey, Mother Monster. My name is Matt. And my question for you is that in the song Born This Way that you recently released, which is awesome, um, you have the lyrics that don't hide yourself in regret. I was wondering if you have ever regretted anything or if there's something in your life that you'd ever want to change in the past. Um, thank you for looking at my question. I really love you. Thank you for making music. Bye. Is there anything that I regret from my past? Um, well, I'll begin with the lyric, and I will say, don't hide yourself in regret, is don't perpetuate negativity in your life. Don't obsess about the things that you didn't do or the things that you may have not done your best. Obsess about the future. Obsess about today. Ob think endlessly about how you can pull the inner queen or king out of yourself and let that, let that superstar shine. I don't believe that fame is something that is obtainable. I believe that it's, it's inside of you. It's not something that you can touch. It's not tangible, which is why when I speak about the paparazzi and things, it's very meaningless to me. There are days when I wake up and I don't feel like a superstar, and it's those regrets. You say, uh, did you ever wake up and feel like a superstar? The answer is no. Uh, the regret of some days, me waking up and not feeling brave enough, uh, those are the regrets I have, because I have so many things to be grateful for, so many fans looking up to me, and the days when I feel insecure, those are my regrets. I want to always be secure and strong for you because look at how sweet they are. They're, they're so, uh, so genuine and they're listening to the lyrics, you know? And so I guess what I would say is don't, don't obsess over what you've done wrong. Always look into yourself for the answer and be the best you that you can be in the future. And in the same vein, I think that's... <laughs> In the same vein, we have a question from Australia. What's the greatest piece of advice you've ever received? The greatest piece of advice I've ever received. It is, if you don't have any shadows, you're not standing in the light. <laughs> That's I say that to myself every day. Every single day I say that. Because I'm not a squeaky clean person. You know, so there's nothing about my music or uh, the monster ball or my fans. That we're not squeaky clean. We're, you know, and people always say to me, who's the real you? When in reality, I'm pretty much an open book about my life. Uh, what you're asking me about is magic. And if you are magical, you always have shadows. You, you're in the light. You must cast a shadow. So let's talk a little bit about the new album. It's out on May 23rd, Born This Way. The, the first single, the title single, is already out. It's been number one for five weeks already. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we have a video question about the new album. So we'll go to Jazz Bridger here on video. Hi, Gaga. If you could describe the Born This Way album in just three words, what would they be? In three words. See how smart my fans are. <laughs> I would call it I well 
I would, I would use a, it, it is one word, I suppose, that avant-garde is one word, but I would call it avant-garde techno-rock. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, rock influences on the album, but not in a, uh, this is a rock music record kind of way. It actually is quite steadfast in that it is an exploration in electronic music and in technosonics but I have sort of created a, a genre of metal dance, techno, pop music with a lot of rock anthemic choruses uh, because that is the music that I love. I'm actually really obsessed with Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> um, my father used to play Bruce Springsteen records for me all the time when I was a kid and he was um, blue collar America. And in a way, I guess, I related to Bruce because I watched my father, a blue-collar American citizen, relate to Bruce. And I think that in a social way, my fans feel blue-collar. They feel like they're the underdogs that will someday be the winners. And uh, I took the influence of Bruce on my father in my life uh, to create this album. and. Uh, yeah, lots of really big, almost like big Def Leppard style melodies in the, in the choruses, but uh, it's electronic dance music. It's very hard and very edgy. Um, and I'm very excited for you to hear it. <laughs> We're all looking forward to it. So. One of the things that you face as an artist is censorship. So Shane RZ66 from Colorado asks, how do you feel about Malaysian radio stations editing out your imperative, no matter gay, straight, or bi, lesbian, transgendered lifeline from Born This Way? Well, obviously, I disagree with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have specifically put those words in a song that I knew would be put on Top 40 Radio. Um, what I would say is for all of the young people in Malaysia that want those words to be played on the radio, it is your job and it is your duty as young people to have your voices heard. You must do everything that you can if you want to be liberated by your society. You must call, you must not stop, you must protest peaceably. No, I don't believe in violence, I don't believe in negativity, there's no reason to be derogatory. You just have to keep fighting for what you believe in. And it, to be quite honest, honesty and the truth is always what will set you free. I can't tell you how many times I get phone calls from TV stations and Troy will call me and he'll say, they want you to edit out this section of the video. Or, and I say, well, just tell them I'm not doing it. And if they don't want to play it, they don't have to. Yeah. That's it. Because if the artist is constantly molding ourselves and changing and abridging, abridging what we do for the machine, then the artist becomes part of the machine. I don't want to be part of the machine. I want the machine to be part of me. Okay. The, the next question. <laughs> the next question is actually a composite, and we'll open up to actually to Googler questions if you want to move to the microphones in just a minute. Um, is a composite. There were 643 fan questions asked about the next single that comes off of Born This Way, Judas. And so I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the inspiration for it, uh, the video you have planned. I'm very excited. Actually, I can exclusively reveal here at Google that I will be making my directorial debut with Lorianne Gibson, directing this video with her ourselves. Um, it's no surprise, I'm sure, to many of you that Judas is a man of the biblical senses. Uh, so um, expect to see some symbolism in this video. Uh, but the song is about, some of the words in the, in the song I can reveal here are, um, when he comes to me, I am ready. I'll wash his feet with my hair if he needs. Forgive him when his tongue lies through his brain, even after three times he betrays me. I'll bring him down, a king with no crown. Uh, so the song is about 
honoring your darkness in order to bring yourself into the light. Uh, it's kind of what I just mentioned to you about if you're standing in the light, you cast a shadow. I have been haunted by my past for very, a very long time. And actually, that's a recurring theme on the album. It has a lot to do, I think, with identity and being able to be proud and say, I was born this way. But uh, I was haunted by being able to go back to New York, being able to go back to my past, being able to understand why I made certain decisions that instead of regretting them, I chose to embrace and understand why I made those choices. And what the song Judas about is about is you have to look into what's haunting you and you need to learn to forgive yourself in order to move on. Oh, we all look forward to it. And it's really fun to dance to. And it, and it sounds like it could be a, a, a pop priest record. It's really fun. So we'll go ahead and take some questions from the audience. Hi, so I understand that the fame brought you a lot of great things, like your monsters and everything that's happening to you. But is there something that the fame brought you that you could do without? That I could do without? Um, I don't know. No, I would say no. I don't want to focus on anything negative like that. It's, there's always, whether you're famous or you're not, there's always things in your life that you could do without. So I don't think anything is particularly fame-related. I'm, I've got a really good family, and if anything, I'm grateful because my family and I wrestled fame to the ground, and we're stronger than ever, so, uh, so no. Hi, Lady Gaga. Thanks so much for coming. You look so cute. <laughs> you. Um, a little background on this. Um, I, I took the inspiration from the Kermit the Frog one. Yes. You can't tell. That was um, And I added a little bit of myself in it. Um, they're bunnies. So for Easter, and I thought it'd be a, a hop in, you know, attire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You like that? I liked it too. Are you? Um, that's yeah. funny. Sorry, what was that? That's funny. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I, I thought I had to, you know, dress up because I, I definitely wanted to speak to you and give you a hug or whatever. Um, but I think, I think Google as a whole and YouTube and the world is very excited for you to come here and be so candid. Um, so on that note, I, I'm definitely, you know, really curious. When you're not in the spotlight, um, when you're home, you know, in New York with your family, um, what are what are some of the things you enjoy doing? Um, what do you wear? Um, what do your pajamas look like? Um, <laughs> Um, well, I'm actually, um, I'm very into yoga. <laughs>